Hello friends, today we shall study barriers to entry. The topics for the day are limit pricing, Bain's theory, assumptions of Bain's theory, models of limit pricing theory, area of certainty and uncertainty. We have studied that the concept of barriers to entry is a characteristic of imperfect competition. Bain's theory deals with barriers to entry. There are different sources of barriers to entry. Bain's theory talks about limit pricing which is a part of artificial source of barriers to entry. Before we understand Bain's theory, we need to understand the concept of limit pricing. We should keep in mind that barriers to entry create monopoly power in the market which reduces consumer surplus and raises producer surplus. It means that barriers to entry can lead to inefficiency in the market due to monopoly because monopoly has its own evils. Bain launched the literature on limit pricing. He was the first to formalize an incumbent's decision to cut its prices to decrease the probability of entry. Fredman observed that low prices had a limited commitment value since a credible threat to cut prices upon entry may deter entry as effectively and more profitably than a price cut prior to entry. For example, an incumbent company fearing entry installs extra machinery. A potential entrant knows that the company will have a lower variable cost in the future. The low cost implies that the incumbent would set a low price if entry occurs then if the incumbent did not have the extra machinery. As a consequence of the incumbent's extra capacity and lower cost, the potential entrant would receive a lower price. Under the right conditions, the entrant's price would be too low to cover all the costs. So, it would choose not to enter. Thus, the incumbent's decision to install the extra machinery prevents entry. Further, as a result of having the extra capacity, the incumbent sets a lower price today even though entry has not and will never occur. Potential competition has disciplined the price. If there were no possibility of entry, the incumbent would not choose the extra capacity, would have a higher level of cost and would set a higher price. The possibility of entry limits the price that the incumbent will charge which is why the phenomenon is called limit pricing. Friends, let us understand limit pricing now. A limit price or limit pricing is a price or pricing strategy where products are sold by a supplier at a price lower than the average cost of production or at a price low enough to make it unprofitable for other players to enter the market. It is used by monopolists to discourage entry into market and is illegal in many countries. The quantity produced by the incumbent firm to act as a deterrent to entry is usually larger than would be optimal for a monopolist, but might still produce higher economic profits than would be earned under competition. In other words, limit pricing suggests that an incumbent firm may be able to make it unprofitable for a potential entrant to enter the industry. The argument is that the incumbent firm can produce a certain output before entry and threaten to continue producing that output even if entry occurs. If the potential entrant believes the claim, he will decide it is unprofitable to enter. Let us understand Bain's theory now. Bain formulated his limit price theory in an article published in 1949 several years before his major work, Barriers to New Competition, which was published in 1956. Let us understand the definition now. A barrier to entry is an advantage of established sellers in an industry over potential entrant sellers, which is reflected in the extent to which established sellers can persistently raise prices above competitive levels without attracting new firms to enter the industry. The basic idea of this theory is that why firm charges a price before the short term maximizing profit equilibrium price. Traditional approach does not deal with the potential entry. This results in normal profit in the long run. 
According to traditional approach, the equilibrium occurs when price and long run cost are equal. This is perfectly competitive price. Bain argued that price did not decrease to LAC in the long run because of the existence of barriers to entry. He also argued that the price was not set at the level compatible with profit maximization because of the threat of potential entry. It means that according to Bain, price is set above perfectly competitive price and below monopoly price. This behavior can be explained by assuming that there are barriers to entry and that the existing firms do not set the monopoly price but the limit price that is the highest price which the established firms believe that they can charge without inducing entry. The example below explains limit pricing theory. We assume that market demand function will be like this. P is equal to 100 minus Q that is our equation number 1. There is one incumbent firm in the industry and its output is by Q i. There is potential entrant to this industry and its output is Q e. Both firms have the same cost of production. The total cost function will be like this T c is equal to 400 plus 10 Q that is our equation number 2 and therefore marginal cost is equal to 10 which is equation number 3. Average cost is equal to 400 divided by Q plus 10 that is our equation number 4. The incumbent firm knows that there is a potential entrant and believes that the potential entrant believes that the incumbent will not change its output even if the potential entrant decides to enter. The incumbent firm therefore wants to choose Q i so that entry will be unprofitable. In fact, the incumbent knows that the potential entrant will not enter unless it earns a positive profit that is pi e is greater than 0. So, the incumbent will choose Q i to make the entrance profit equal to 0. This will happen if the residual demand curve of the potential entrant just touches that is it is tangent to its average cost curve but does not rise above it anywhere. To find the tangency point we differentiate average cost function with respect to quantity. Therefore, our fifth equation will be while differentiating A c with respect to q we get minus 400 q raised to minus 2. The slope of the residual demand curve is differentiating p by q we get minus 1 which is our equation number 6. Equating equation number 4 and 5 we get minus 400 q raised to minus 2 is equal to minus 1. Therefore, 400 is q raised to 2. Therefore, 20 is equal to q. When q is equal to 20, average cost is equal to 400 divided by 20 plus 10 is equal to 30 that is our equation number 8. This means that the residual demand curve must pass through the point q that is 20 and p which is rupees 30 and have a slope of minus 1. The general equation for this residual demand curve will be p is equal to a minus q e where a is the vertical intercept and at the point of tangency this equation will satisfy 30 is equal to a minus 20. Therefore, a is equal to 50 and the residual demand curve which just touches the average cost curve will have the equation p is equal to 50 minus q. The market demand curve for potential entrant is p is equal to 100 minus q i minus q e. To leave the appropriate residual demand curve q 
qi must equal to 50. The calculation of best output will be like this p is equal to 50 minus qe that is our equation number 9. Therefore, tre which is total revenue of the entrant firm is equal to p q e is equal to 50 minus q e multiplied by q e is equal to 50 q e minus q e square which is our equation number 10. Therefore, marginal revenue of the entrant firm is equal to 50 minus 2 q e which is our equation number 11. Setting this equal to marginal cost, we have equation number 12 which is 50 minus 2 q e is equal to 10. Therefore, q e is equal to 20 which is our equation number 13. Therefore, p e is equal to 50 minus 20 is equal to rupees 30 which is equation number 14. At this price and quantity profit for the entrant is pi e is equal to 30 multiplied by 20 minus 400 plus into brackets 10 multiplied by 20 is equal to 0 which is equation number 15. Given this calculation, the potential entrant would decide not to enter. The price of rupees 30 is called the limit price because the incumbent firm by threatening to produce 50 units of output after entry occurs is threatening to drive the price down to rupees 30 after entry. It means that the incumbent firm sets the price in such a manner that the profit of the potential entrant will become 0. In the market if he enters and hence there is no potential entry in the market. This price is known as the limit price. Before we understand the model of Bain's theory, we need to understand the assumptions of the model. The assumption of Bain's theory go like this. Number 1, there is a determinate long run demand curve for industry output which is unaffected by price adjustments of sellers or by entry. Hence, the market marginal revenue curve is determinate. The long run industry demand curve shows the expected sales at different prices maintained over long periods. Number 2, there is effective collusion among established oligopolists. It means that collusion will lead to higher gain. Number 3, the established firms can compute a limit price below which entry will not occur and the computation of limit price depends on a on the estimation of costs of the potential entrant, b on the market elasticity of demand, c on the shape and level of the long term average cost, d on the size of the market, e on the number of firms in the industry. Number 4, above the limit price entry is attracted and there is considerable uncertainty concerning the sales of established firms. Number 5, the established firms seek the maximization of their own long run profit. Let us understand the model now. There are two models of limit price theory. The flow chart shows the two models, no collusion with the new entrant. This model can be explained by figure 1. In this figure, quantity is measured on x axis and cost and revenue is measured on y axis. Number 1, the average revenue curve shows the demand curve for a firm. MR is the marginal revenue curve in the figure. AR and MR both are downward sloping curve that shows inverse relationship between quantity and MR and AR both. Number 2, in case of perfect competition, equilibrium occurs at point B. At this point, average revenue and long run average cost are equal. 
the equilibrium price will be P C and equilibrium output will be Q C. Here price, long run marginal cost and long run average cost are equal. Therefore, firm cannot enjoy abnormal profits in the market. Number 3, in case of monopoly equilibrium point is F. At this point marginal revenue and long run marginal cost are equal. The equilibrium price will be P M and equilibrium outcome will be Q M. Here P M is greater than the marginal cost and hence firm earns the profit of P C, P M, A F. Number 4. Now we assume that limit price is correctly calculated and determines at P L. At this price equilibrium output is Q L. We can easily see that limit price P L is lower than that of monopoly price P M and higher than that of price in perfect competition. Therefore, P C is less than P L is less than P M. In this case profit of the firm is P L C H P C. This is lower than that of monopoly profit of P C P M A F. Another point is that the profit of the firm at P L is higher than the perfect competition. Now friends, let us understand the area of certainty and uncertainty. Monopoly makes larger amount of profits due to market power. Higher profits attract new firms in the market. If a firm enters in the market, the monopolist will lose the market power which leads to competition and lower amount of profit. If a monopolist charges a price above limit price and below monopoly price, there is a risk to the new entrant. Because in this case, the behavior of the new entrant is not known. This region is known as uncertain region. In figure 1, the left of C is uncertain demand curve. The right of C is the area of certainty. The behavior of the new entrant is known to the monopolist. Friends, let us summarize the session now. We have studied that barriers to entry is a characteristic of an imperfect market. These barriers lead to monopoly and higher prices in the long run which in turn reduces the consumer surplus and increases the producer surplus. Bain's theory deals with limit price. A limit price or limit pricing is a price or pricing strategy where products are sold by a supplier at a price lower than the average cost of production or at a price low enough to make it unprofitable for other players to enter the market. It means that the incumbent firm sets the price in such a manner that the profit of the potential entrant will become zero in the market if he enters and hence there is no potential entry in the market. This price is known as the limit price. Thank you friends.